Focus Assist. Currently it's off, but there are two menu items here. Uh, you can change the color from red to green to blue. I'm going to choose blue just to be consistent with the HD series of cameras. And then I'm going to turn Focus Assist on. Now what happens when Focus Assist is on is that everything that is supposedly not in focus is black and white and anything that is in focus is highlighted with a blue line. And you can see here that the, uh, the chart back there is highlighted with a blue line. And if I just manually throw it out of focus, you'll see the blue lines go away. And as it finds focus, right there. There we go, we're highlighted with blue lines. Now the thing is, the way that Focus Assist works is the camera looks for high contrast lines. So if we zoom in here, and now we want to focus on the fruit, you can see that on the orange in the front, where we get the little dimples in the orange, we are seeing some blue with the Focus Assist. But we're still seeing a little bit of the chart, even though it is out of focus at this point and it is still, a little bit of it is highlighted in blue. At the moment, we're in full auto mode, and we know that because the little green A is on in the upper left of our screen. And uh, we're just looking at the fruit, which is in front of a white background. Now I'm just going to put a black background up and see what happens. And I'll bring it out put it back in again. So you can see what's happening is that the camera is looking at the exposure of the whole frame and trying to find a good medium exposure and when the background is white obviously it's stopping down to control that white. When we make the background black it actually increases. It's trying to see how much detail it can get out of this black. The problem is our banana and our orange become very overexposed at that point. So let's go into manual mode here. There we go. Now we'll go into the menu, go into camera process, and select photometry area. Now at the moment it's set for the whole screen. So this is what we were talking about. It's, it's looking at the whole screen and setting exposure based on the average of the brightness of the whole screen. But the camera actually has a spot meter. And this is exactly like on an SLR with a spot meter, where you're only looking at the little tiny portion within the spot to determine exposure. So we'll just select spot. Now I'd like to tell you about some must-have accessories. And the first thing you'll notice that I have here on the tripod is this Anton Bauer ellipse system. It's actually a very big battery. And the way it works is um, it just has this cable comes out of here and plugs directly into the DC input on the camera. So obviously it's a lot bigger than the battery that actually comes with the camera, which equals way more shooting time. Now I can't tell you exactly how many hours you can shoot with this. My best guess is around five, maybe six. I haven't actually uh, had it go dead yet and I've had it on for hours. So um, I just don't know. But uh, <laughs> it actually is pretty light. You can even uh, go handheld with it. I'll just do that quickly here. Take it off and it adds a little bit of weight to the camera but uh, you know no big deal it's not that much heavier. And then of course uh, you can quickly detach the camera from the ellipse system completely. It has its own quick release and the idea here is you just press this down, slide the camera to the left and there you go. It comes off. It's it's that simple. So I'm just going to put it back in here, click it back in, and show you the next accessory that really you should be getting first day with your camera. If you can pick it up with your camera, it would be great. A UV filter. Now, a UV filter does serve a purpose, which is to filter out UV rays. But ultimately, the main reason most people put them on their cameras, whether it's a a still camera or a video camera is really to protect the lens. So what you want to buy when you uh, purchase filters is uh, get 46 millimeter diameter filters. And then of course you can just remove the 
lens hood like that and your filter just screws right in. But while I have the lens hood off, I want to show you the wide angle adapter. Now, you can use any wide angle adapter that will attach to 46 millimeters. This particular wide angle adapter is the one uh, sold by JVC and it is a 0.7x and then it screws in right here just make sure that it's not cross threaded it goes straight on in now of course once this is on you can't put the lens hood back on because this just takes up too much room and it is a pretty heavy piece of glass but it's well worth it if you're shooting in tight spaces like the interior of a car um, you can actually be a passenger in the front seat of a compact car and, um, and still shoot inside the car with this adapter. I haven't had the zebras turned on, but I do have them programmed in the user button too. If I just turn them on, you'll see the zebra pattern on the banana there. Now, this zebra is set to a very specific range. So let's go into the menu, and go into camera process, and we'll set our zebra range. So here our zebra is on, and we can set the threshold range here. So this, at the moment, is set to its default, which is 70 to 80 percent, which I'm guessing the JVC engineers thought would be an ideal setting for skin tone. Um, personally, I would prefer to set skin tone in around the 60 to 70 percent range. But how I usually use zebras is I'll set them to over 100%. So what that tells me is anything that is showing zebra is going to be overexposed, blown out. It's going to be a white pixel, and there will be nothing I can do about it. So the way to set this threshold is you can press up or down, and that toggles back and forth between the bottom, where you see BTM representing the bottom, or the top. And so the top range and you can move it left and right once you're selected on it. I'm going to move it all the way up to over 100. Now I'm going to go to the bottom range and move it all the way up to 100. So now I have a very tight range here, 100% and over. That is telling me that that is a highlight on that banana that is going to be overexposed, it's going to be white, and there's going to be nothing I can do about it in post production. Let's go out now and adjust the exposure. So I'm going to adjust the iris here. And you can see that I, just by knocking it down a fraction on the iris, I can get rid of that hot spot. And of course, if I opened up too much, then I've got a really big hot spot there. But you know what? The little hot spot on the orange is still okay. And the same with the nectarine. Let's take a look inside the advanced controls. I want to show you something really cool here. Go into camera process. And we'll go down to knee control. Knee control specifically alters the way the camera responds to the higher range of brightness levels. So at the moment it's set for automatic. But let's turn it down and let's just look at what happens to that highlight. As I turn it down, I can go as low as 85% and the zebra almost disappears. So I'm barely touching the exposure on anything in the lower two-thirds of the exposure range. I'm only affecting how the camera is reacting to the highlights. So now if I have this set for 85, we'll go back out and take a look. No more zebra. So now I can go back into my iris and increase the exposure even more now so that my background is brighter and my highlight is much smaller. So now my knee has clamped the top in such a way that it has a smooth fall off instead of a sharp clip to white. So this is a great way to control highlights. And as well, if you're a wedding videographer, this is a great tool to use for white dresses.